Hey guys, welcome back. I wasn't sure if I was gonna make this video because I was hoping that, well, the world lockdown would be over by November. That's what many governments and organizations were predicting, but as we all know, looks like this is gonna be the new norm for a while. Some sources even say that this situation may last till 2024 or something, which I personally find horrifying and I hope isn't the case. I wouldn't be so bold as to claim life will definitely be much better if the pandemic ended yesterday, because I don't know the future, but with my very human, very limited understanding, I hope this pandemic ends and lockdown finally goes away. Assuming this is an alternative situation better than, say, a nuclear war or Armageddon or something equally as terrifying and very, very possible. Humans have this tendency to think they know what's best for them. We don't. We can only do our best and pray for the best outcome. That's it. Before I continue, I just want to remind everyone to take care of their health to the best of their ability, maintain social distancing, take care of the elderly in your family, wear a mask, and do your best to be responsible. So let's go back a bit. At the tail end of 2019, I had planned to occasionally post these easygoing, quiet vlog-style videos to my channel in order to sort out my thoughts and create a kind of journal of my progress moving towards a full-time art career. It was a way for me to document what's going on and to some extent motivate myself and hold myself accountable. And maybe in a way help someone else who's in the same position as me, trying hard to make the transition to full-time art professionally and not there yet. Of course, COVID happened and a lot of projects and plans got postponed or cancelled. For one, I still can't make the career shift, not even at entry level, not even that. I've applied to over 170 jobs in my fields of interest so far, between September and December 2020, and also a handful of jobs in January, and I didn't receive one single response. And those who were kind enough to send me an email were sending rejection emails. Again, 99% of those job applications were for entry-level positions. And don't even get me started on the ridiculous requirements on some of these jobs. I applied anyway. I mean, some jobs wanted the entry-level position people to be 5 years experience. What does that even mean? It was also in my plans to travel because I wanted the experience and mentorship in some aspects of the work I'd love to do. It would be a dream come true to work remotely and independently, of course. That's been a dream of mine long before COVID. But given that I'm changing my career, I want that in-house experience first to feel like I really got the hang of things, like I really understand the production pipeline before I have the confidence to take off on work from anywhere and become a contractor with minimum face-to-face -face interaction. Of course, none of that happened and my freelancing is pretty stagnant. I've gone months without a single paid project to work on. I admit, I try not to think about it too much so I'm not gonna dwell on it in this video, but I do feel scared. It's a real fear of mine that it'll be too late to shift my career. But here's the thing the majority of human beings don't really want to think about, but it's true. Sometimes we don't know what's best for us. Sometimes we're amazed that the event or the delay that we thought caused us misery before was actually a blessing in disguise. If I can give a simple metaphor, it's like being ensnared in a net, and even though you're trapped inside the net, it protected you from something like a vicious animal outside. While from a professional standpoint I'm trapped, and our economy is... I, I don't even want to talk about that because it's very triggering, I'm grateful for the fact that I had a little more time for a couple personal projects, and overall improving my art portfolio, especially when it comes to lighting and background painting. The lockdown allowed me to move faster in some other aspects. For example, I was able to finish projects I had been postponing for months. Not for lack of motivation, but for lack of time and energy. I managed to update a decent portion of my art and design portfolio, but I mean, I have to admit it's still a long way to go. I managed to work on my background painting. Amidst the sadness and bad news and struggling, it gave me drive and optimism to listen to people sharing their positive stories and how they took advantage of the situation to the best of their ability by making use of the extra time to finish projects they had been putting aside for years and taking courses and learning new skills that will hopefully help them in future work when things open up again. 
I decided this is the healthier way to deal with the world situation, physically and mentally. If you can't do the job you want to do or go where you want, then at least make use of the time you have to learn skills that will make you more fit for when job prospects finally reopen. Aside from learning and working on my portfolio, I got to play a little bit of video games, the highlight being Detroit Become Human. I love this game and I don't really care about the arguments of how it's a problematic allegory to slavery and whatnot. Everybody's entitled to their opinions, of course, and for me, it's a fun and easygoing game, or, well, more accurately, an interactive movie, with very interesting characters, and I loved it. I'm only sad we don't get enough of a chance to explore the world's lore itself. Maybe one day I'll talk about the game more in a future video. As some of you probably know, my current job is demanding and time-consuming. It's unrelated to art. Sometimes I'll even work all day on weekends and go for a long time without a break. More often than not, I'll juggle new tasks, new responsibilities, some of which I didn't ask for, and as a result I'm mentally and physically exhausted. I don't do art nearly as often as I'd like. The reason I'm outright saying this in a video is not to make excuses for myself, but rather to remind myself to be a little kinder. As someone who's constantly talking down to themselves inside their head, I'm never satisfied with the quality of my work and I'm never happy with how far I've come. So I'm at a point where I have to make myself accept that it's important to remember that I do in fact work hard. I'm not putting things off out of laziness. I'm putting it off because I literally only have 24 hours in a day. And I'm not Beyonce, I don't have an army of people who can finish stuff I don't need to do myself for me. People who say we all have the same 24 hours in a day say it as a means of motivation, I understand that, but no, no, we don't all have the same quote-unquote 24 hours in a day. My 24 hours can't be compared to someone who can afford help to make good use of these 24 hours by delegating work that's important but extremely time-consuming. I mean, I'd love to have that one day, but as of now, time is passing too fast for me, way too fast. I only have two hands, two eyes, two legs, and one brain. I'm usually so, so tired after work and even during work itself that I can't think and I can't properly plan for the future. Some of you know exactly what I'm talking about. In a way, this lockdown allowed me to have a little more time to really think about my future and what I'm supposed to do to shift my time and energy towards my goals. It also made me more humble. Some things are out of our hands and we have to accept that. All the money and power in the world won't change the fact that there are things outside of our hands, and human beings aren't anywhere as tough and world-changing as they think they are. In many ways, my feet are planted to the ground. Everything is on hold, the economic situation is more terrifying by the day, and I constantly worry about the future. I rarely talk about this, even with my closest people, but the fact that I've been wanting to shift my career for years now and haven't succeeded makes me worry I've done something wrong, like I've accidentally sabotaged myself or something. But then I remember to stop wallowing in pity and get up and try again. Because the world doesn't revolve around me. So if you've had big plans for your art and your future overall in 2020 and you failed to meet them, don't be hard on yourself. Accept that there are things outside of your control and accept that there is always more you can learn and you can do. Never stop learning and never say you're too old to learn. Keep your mind open and learn to recognize opportunities which took me a long time to learn and is it's a skill in itself. Be humble and accept that ultimately you're not entitled to the world. You're not entitled to success. You're not entitled to recognition. Be humble. You work hard for these things and you pray to receive them. And when you do receive them, you feel gratitude towards God who puts you in that position, health-wise, knowledge-wise, location-wise, and so many more factors you may not even be aware of, to then finally have the fortune of catching an opportunity you wanted. Thanks a lot for listening, guys, and I hope this year is a better one than the last. I have a goal of trying to release a video once every month, so if you'd like to see more stuff from me, please subscribe to my channel and let me know what topics you're interested in seeing. Stay positive, stay humble, and stay safe. And I'll see you in the next one. Take care.